Well, it's milk time. You get to meet Lily, and we're going to talk about our milking routine. What I'm doing here, and I don't think you're going to be able to see it this time, is I'm pouring hot water in a bucket, and I've got clean white rags, and I'm going to clean her udder up, and what that's going to do is it's going to get her ready for milking. It's going to help her let her milk down so we can get started. Lily is a good, good girl. She's so sweet, but she has gone through a few health challenges and a few setbacks since she had her last calf. And we're, we'll talk about that. Oh, you can feel her let her milk down. She's such a sweet girl. I usually do a routine of three rags. And I bring a thermos out full of good warm water. It's pretty hot. And uh, I will wipe her down with two rags. I'll wipe her udder down. And that gets the dirt and the loose hair off. And also the warmth causes her to let her milk down. And what's so sweet is you can actually feel her when she lets her milk down. Now the last rag... I take four corners. Each corner is for a teat. And that's my final wipe. And then I hang it up here in case I have to wipe my hands on something. But what that does, I don't, I don't take my rags that I've wiped with and put them back in my bucket because I don't want to contaminate the water that I'm using. So when I use a rag, I set it on my table take a, a clean rag out and wash her udder so we're not contaminating. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a test strip of milk and I just do it in a cup. I don't dip her teats. My warm water has vinegar in it. That's my disinfectant. And I'll take and I will strip a little bit of milk in this cup and I will check each time to make sure there's no clots or blood or any problem. But I will tell you this, I know this cow very well. And I can tell when I touch her udder if there's a problem almost immediately. So that's a, that's a good thing. You want to know your animals. Get to know them, and you'll know immediately if something's off. It's looking good. She is good now. I'll just set this off to the side. Okay, I'll, I'll be back with my bucket and we'll start milking. I'm going to show you something that I do that's a little bit different. I don't set my bucket on the stanchion floor because it's just going to get dirty by nature. There's nothing you can do about it. So I actually put my stainless steel bucket in another bucket I've got this belt, this come off of an old suitcase or duffel bag, and I hold this between my legs and it never touches the floor. One thing about Lily is she is a great hand milking cow because she has longer teats. A lot of cows nowadays are bred for shorter ones because they're bred for milking machines. But I was blessed with her. She's got long enough teats that it's easy to hand milk her. I usually start on the front two quarters and I'll milk a little bit and then I'll move to the back two quarters and milk those a little bit and it's just kind of back and forth and back and forth. I was going to talk to you a little bit about Lily. Weight wise, Lily is not where she needs to be right now. She's had several setbacks since she had her last calf. She, we just weaned her calf not too long ago, but it all started when uh, Abigail was born, Lily actually retained her placenta, which means she did not shed it. 
it was out, but it was hanging. And Abigail was born in August, and it was hot, the flies were bad, and that was just a, um, a recipe for, for major infection, which would have killed Lily. So it was several trips to the vet, uh, finally got her placenta to release, and so that was the first hurdle. Then Lily has, since we've had her, <clears throat> We've had two calves, and she has a history of milk fever. It's actually a metabolic syndrome. She, uh, we like to lost her. I just happened to be home, and I, I noticed her cha the changes in her behavior, and, and she went down. And when a cow goes down, you know, it's not a good thing. But we saved her the first time. Well, that was three weeks after calving, which is a little bit unusual. So when, when uh, Abigail was born, we tried to prepare for that and prevent it and still missed it. And at two and a half weeks, she uh, came down with milk fever again. And we caught it and saved her. But that was just two setbacks. And then she's had a, a couple of other setbacks, lost weight and contracted pneumonia. And it's just been, after this calf, it's been a rough ride. She ended up losing more weight than I was comfortable with. And with winter coming on, that's the worst time. So we're trying to get her weight back up. But a dairy cow is a lean cow anyway. But rather than her putting weight on, she's actually, her milk production is just increasing. It's kind of a catch-22, but the blessing of it is, is we have a nice warm barn. Lily will be taken very good care of through the winter. So she's not a herd cow. She's a family milk cow. She's very, uh, <laughs> we call her the princess, the queen of the barn. So she is healthy now. We're just trying to get weight on her. But you have to be careful with the grain. You don't want to overload with grain because their system is not designed to uh, digest grain. They're grass eaters. She tends to get a tummy ache if you dump too much grain too fast. So we just have to be careful. And we have to give some thought to how we feed her. She's a blessing though. She's a very sweet cow. She's very gentle. She's very loving. She's a little comical sometimes. And she is definitely part of the family. I prefer to hand milk. One reason is, is I love being close to my cow. I love, I love having my hands on her, all of our animals. All of our, the horses and everything, they, uh, we keep a close watch, we interact with them, and that way if something does happen, you know immediately something's off. I'm gonna finish up milking, and we'll meet back in the cabin, and I'll show you how I pour up my milk. So let's get our milk poured up. I wanted to show you some of the equipment that I use. The first thing is a half gallon mason jar and then I have a stainless steel funnel. I prefer stainless over plastic because plastic can absorb odors and it's harder to clean. You can buy the larger funnels made for milk straining but this one works fine for us. And then this is uh, a straining rag cut from cotton flour sacks. You can buy these at, like at Walmart and you can see that I've cut them into quarters. I lay it in the top just like that. This strains very, very well. We've had no problem in two years. We love it. Now my milk bucket, you see how clean it is? There's no barn residue on it. And we just pour. Beautiful, fresh, raw, creamy Jersey milk. The last of the last jar. Now I'm going to date this and put it in the refrigerator. 
and I'll be back with some final thoughts. Well, we talked a little bit back in the barn about some of the health struggles Lily's had since she had her last calf. Uh, the last uh, major struggle, which was not too long ago, was that she contracted pneumonia. God's word tells us that a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. And Lily is a prime example. We have, um, we have been blessed with Lily. We've had her uh, right at two years. And she gives way more than she takes. She gives with her milk products. She gives with her personality, her sweetness, her gentleness. She's a kind little cow. We don't give it a second thought to give her what she needs. So I just want you to consider if God created the animals and he pays attention to the fact that you care for those animals. He pays attention to you. He loves us. He created us. So get in that word. That's, that's God's love letter to us. And let him talk to you through his word. Thank you so much for stopping by the cabin. And thank you for coming along as we did our morning chores. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And I, it would bless me so much if you would subscribe and come back and visit me time and time again. And blessings from the cabin.